So this video was supposed to be a continuation of our last. But as I started doing research for this project, I noticed that so many of the brands I was looking at were headed by Korean designers. There's a lot of probable reasons why we've seen this explosive growth come out of Korea in the last few years. Some of them more obvious than others. We see examples of this in brands like Post Archive Faction, Anderson Bell, Gentle Monster, and Adder Error. Breaking down the reasons why probably deserves its own video. So today we'll be talking about five emerging Korean menswear designers that we think are absolutely fascinating. So with that being said, sit back and relax and welcome to another episode of The Curriculum. Xlim is a Seoul-based collective founded in 2021 by designer and stylist Do Hee Kim. Instead of traditional seasons, the brand presents its clothing in episodes. Within each episode, there are multiple synopses, which is where the brand offers their more seasonal products. For example, in Synopsis 1, you'll see more clothing geared towards spring-summer, while Synopsis 4 has clothing that's more geared for the winter. Each Xlim episode lasts about a year. And what's important about it is it doesn't set the expectation that Xlim needs to reinvent itself every single season. This way of presenting their clothes is exactly the type of brand that Xlim is. Not a brand that reinvents itself from season to season, but a design lab that's obsessed with finding the interactions between different textures, fabrics, and colors. Thus, Xlim's use of episodes allows the brand to keep evolving their core focus. Personally, I think Xlim is quite genreless. There's no doubt they take inspiration from Korean architecture and culture in general as their inspiration, but when it comes to their offerings, they have everything from streetwear inspired silhouettes to tailoring esque dress pants. And so there isn't anything that's immediately clear about their core inspiration. What really unites these styles and silhouettes is Xlim's utilitarian approach and attention to detail when it comes to the composition of every single garment. This approach can be broken down into three main segments, their fabrics, their layering, and their details. When it comes to their fabrics, Xlim often plays with different textures, opacities, and colors. With these manipulations, Xlim's colors are never just simply a flat yellow or a flat black. Their fabric selections interact uniquely with light and color, which they can then use as their palette for designing meshing these fabrics of different properties on one garment. When we normally think about layering, we usually think about layering different garments together. But for Xlim, layering happens on singular garments, allowing those varied textures, colors, and opacities to create amazing interactions on the fabric surface. Finally, it's those small details that finish out the garment. We see crinkled panels, exposed stitching, and even some asymmetrical cuts here and there. These minute details basically become Easter eggs for every single consumer to find. To show how all of this comes together, here's a look from their most recent episode, episode three. From afar, this look features a light gray jacket and an off-white pant. However, up close is where the magic is, where we find the team's fabric manipulations that create some of the most amazing interactions I have ever seen. When we look at the jacket, we see the signature paneling cuts, where the edges of the panels are deconstructed using different shaded fabrics. Along the seams, we find more embroidery that creates a subtle dimensionality. On the back of the jacket, we see a cutout that exposes this embossed ribbed fabric alongside these suede details. The ribbing elements can be torn off to reveal a contrast fabric, which can be customized to the wearer's liking. On the pants, we see echoes of the jacket. Embossed ribbing comes back on the pants cuffs, with interwebbing lace features on the inner seam. On the back, there's this suede, lace, and ribbing that once again can be customized to the wearer's liking and reveal the layers of fabric below the garment. What I like about this look is how cohesive it looks from afar, but once you get close, there's a clash of fabrics and textures that live on the fabric surface. Xlim's team has mastered these subtle interactions while leaving room for the wearer to have the ultimate say in what the garment will look like taking away the referential inspiration behind clothing and replacing it with an engineering approach to fabrics. We're here for whatever Xlim has in their future. Kusikok is the brainchild of multidisciplinary artist Cho Gi Seok. Recently nominated for an LVMH prize in 2023, the brand is a physical manifestation of Cho's creative direction. Kusikok is one of the many creative outlets for Cho Gi Seok 
a polymathic practitioner who has found success in photography, creative direction, sculpting, drawing, and even more. As a brand, Kusikok feels most representative of Cho's work in photography. Cho's exhibit at the Photographica in New York City last year concerned the theme of coexistence between human, digital, and natural spheres. Even at the brand's most anthropological, like their biker-inspired tops, elements of nature worm through their way in the form of origami flowers or horned helmets. The most obvious references in Cho's photography exist through Kusikok's graphics and general art direction, which you can see in their lookbook shots, sharing creative similarities of human expression tempered by floral and organic shapes. Much like the brand's multidisciplinary output from Cho, Kusikok's direction and influences range from industrial and architectural fabric manipulation to streetwear staples that nonetheless evoke the tactility and beauty of Cho's art. It's precisely this idea that Kusikok is a physical embodiment of Cho's art that separates the brand as a whole in today's fashion landscape. Not often do we see established art directors and artists especially embark on their own fashion label. And when they do, they often approach fashion from a different perspective than somebody who has been formally trained. What might be lost in technique, which is definitely not the case here, is made up in the overall creative direction of the brand a world that Cho is incredibly familiar with. His experience allows the brand to craft incredibly cohesive, conceptual, and visually appealing campaigns and collections, which is the language of modern fashion brands. Taking a look at the brand's Fall Winter 22 collection, we see Cho's direction spring to life. Rarely would I ever say this, but Kusikok is a brand where the lookbook feels equally as important as the products themselves. The lookbook is a melting pot of Cho's themes all stirred together to form a cohesive world where his narrative gets to play out. The phrase I would use to describe this lookbook is a surrealist fantasy, where over the 39 shots, we see a story being told about an angel who eventually loses their wings. Along the way, we meet demons and monsters, heroes and villains, whose looks not only feel more akin to gallery installations, but also used to showcase the more daring silhouettes cuts, and other details from this season. The contrast between all of these elements somehow still feels harmonious, is exactly what keeps this brand interesting, and we're excited to continue to follow it into the future. Junte Kim is a designer based in Seoul. He graduated from Central St. Martins in 2019 and is a recent LVMH 2023 semi-finalist. Since graduating, Kim found success very quickly, after presenting his Fall Winter 22 collection, Romantic from Freedom, during London Fashion Week. It probably isn't fair to characterize Kim's work as purely menswear, as his work is intentionally gender fluid under the slogan, Unraveling Binary Constructions. The brand's core motif is focused on deconstructing gendered clothing from the past, with a heavy emphasis on finding an intersection between historical women's costumes and men's clothing. Kim is essentially trying to bridge the incompatibility between historical women's costume and contemporary menswear. Common womenswear motifs that you'll find within the brand include elements of corsets, garters, and stays. These womenswear details are then combined with menswear silhouettes. For his first collection, Kim specifically focused on the restrictive pieces from the 17th to the 18th century, like the poor point jacket, the doublet jacket, and also the jerkin. However, Kim adapts these inspirations every single season and isn't just limited to 17th century menswear. For example, in Spring Summer 23, armed with this foundational idea of bridging the incompatibilities between menswear and womenswear, Junte Kim tackles 1950s America. The collection is titled Romantic Poetry, The New Preppy, and directly takes inspiration from the movie Dead Poets Society. This classic movie depicts the story of a 1950s elite conservative boarding school and tells the story of an English teacher who inspired his students through his teaching of poetry. The film itself feels like such a fitting reference for Junte Kim, given its commentary on rigid gender roles and its romanticism towards pursuing individual goals. We see Kim interpret the movie from two main angles, 
one more literal, and one more about the movie's main idea. More literally, this collection directly references the 1950s dress, and subverts the tailoring techniques in the three-piece suits and preppy style. On the other hand, Kim's brand also authentically represents one of the main conflicts of the movie, the conflict between conformity and rebellion. Dead Poet Society never comments on which path is the answer. Rather, a path of individuality can lead to tragedy. This is where I think Kim's brand lands, somewhere in the middle. This brand is all about questioning the idea of gender within clothing and society without breaching what we consider normal. This makes Kim's clothing conceptually challenging while retaining its ultimate wearability, which is something key in today's fashion world. We're really excited to see how Junte Kim continues to interpret the dichotomies between the gendered clothing, while finding these innovative yet practical ways of depicting it. Kang Hyuk is a label founded by Kang Hyuk Choi and Saglak Shan. After graduating the Royal College of Art in 2017, the two launched Kang Hyuk to almost immediate success. Each collection Kang Hyuk releases showcases the fervent obsession they approach their clothes with, each look reiterating on the chosen thematic texture. Their distinct fabric selections pushes their chosen materials to their technical limits. Kong Hyuk's design goes back to the foundations of the way we construct clothing, the textile. In general, the label can be characterized by their unconventional use of man-made materials in their clothing. Starting with Choi's graduation project, using vehicular airbags as a material to construct garments. This 21st century interpretation of using found objects is core to the brand's design language. The trend of using found objects or ready-mades was popularized by French artist Marcel Duchamp, who used found objects to create art. Most famously adopted in Duchamp's Fountain, which is literally a urinal contextualized as art, artists since then have taken Duchamp's inspiration and applied it through late modern and contemporary art. Kang Hyuk brings the ready-made into the realm of fashion. Instead of using old fabrics or garments in their upcycling, they deconstruct everyday objects that they find. Through this method, they breathe a second life into these objects as it's recrafted into modern and durable outerwear, vests, shirts, and trousers. On these garments, these ready-mades usually translate into convertible zipper detailing, reinforced stitching, ventilation ports, padding, and even serial numbers from the airbags and industrial materials that they acquire. In their recent collections, while still retaining their airbag elements, Kang Hyuk has moved towards upcycling more industrial materials through their collaboration with Korean corporation Hyosung. By engaging an industrial company in their work, Kang Hyuk has found a direct source for their ready-made fabrics. They're often given industrial polymides that they can then manipulate and upcycle, which we can see in their Autumn Winter 21 collection where Hyosung gives them airbags that couldn't be used due to production malfunctions. This allowed Kang Hyuk to make around 700 jackets and produce a ski collection in their futuristic functional style. In Spring Summer 23, they were even able to get their hands on Vectrin, a material that's found on the airbags in the Mars Pathfinder, and Xylon, which was used in the parachutes on SpaceX Dragon aircraft. This season, they even developed their own polyamide fabric called Aramid, a heat-resistant synthetic fabric that we can see in these yellow looks. With these materials, Kang Hyuk designs a uniform for futuristic astronauts through the techniques of embossing, engraving, dot silicon, and knitting. What we're seeing in their last few collections is Kang Hyuk venturing into more color. By using their knowledge of fabric manipulation and adding more tones and colors to their collection, we're excited to see what Kang Hyuk has next. Jiyong Kim is a Central St. Martin's graduate who founded his eponymous label in 2021. Prior to launching his own brand, Kim had already worked for Mihara Yasuhiro, Le Maire, and even under Virgil Abloh at Louis Vuitton. However, it was his graduate presentation, titled Daylight Matters, a collection focused around fabric sustainability that propelled him into popularity. Kim's take was a fresh one, rethinking sustainability by reusing things we consider at the end of its life cycle, and giving it a fresh lease on life through Kim's signature fabric treatment technique. Here, Kim uses defected fabrics and discarded garments, and dyed these fabrics using a method that uses no water and no harmful chemicals, the sun. 
It's a method that takes up to five months in the sun to trigger a unique and dynamic effect of weathering and discoloration on the fabric surface. Other elements such as wind and rain affect the fabric too, creating different levels of fading that cannot be replicated by machines. Like the best winemakers in Europe, each season's products are at the mercy of nature's variability. This is what I find most interesting about sun bleaching as a technique. Every season can be different because of the way the fabric turns out. A year that sees more sun, rain, or wind can have drastic effects on the way the fabric ends up looking, making each year's fabric inherently unique, engaging the design team in different ways every single season. To make the wine analogy again, collectors hold on to wine because of the way the alcohol ages throughout time. Kim's clothes are the same way, as throughout wear and time, the fabric will continue to change depending on the weather exposure the wearer subjects it to, which recalls the arduous process of breaking in raw denim to create a lifetime experience with a garment. This progression with the fabric is so exciting and allows each wearer to have a unique interaction with Kim's clothing based on their own experiences. Diving into their looks, Kim takes these unique fabric methods and applies it to contemporary menswear silhouettes. These silhouettes fit loose and range between workwear, streetwear, and even suiting styles. We have cargo pants, shirts, and chore jackets. And this might seem incohesive, but I really think it emphasizes the key point of the brand. Normally, sun bleaching is something that is associated with the streetwear scene, especially in vintage t-shirts. But Kim's use of the fabric on all types of menswear really speaks to the brand's original goal, to show how the beauty and a more sustainable process has no boundaries when it comes to style. As a young brand that's slowly defining its design language, Kim's team has already shown their flexibility with how they apply their signature fabric onto different types of garments. Just last season, they began to implement more unisex looks while continuing to explore the possible permutations of their sun dyeing techniques. With so many possibilities of how they manipulate their fabrics into so many different types of clothing, we're excited to see where this brand goes in the future. Thank you so much if you made it to the end. Follow us at the description below to keep updated with our project to open a retailer here in New York. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and a comment, and we'd love to hear what you think about these brands that we talked about today. We're also testing out a new setup, as you can see from our last few videos, so if it's something that you enjoyed, please feel free to let us know also. This has been another episode of The Curriculum, part of Commune's content platform to showcase and promote designers that we think are amazing. Until next time, from us to you, please take care.